Hi, I was just sitting here daydreaming about soil, wondering what it's made of, how to tell if it's healthy, things like that. I'm Kathleen with the Hamden Hampshire Conservation District, and today we're gonna lo learn those things and more, and we'll finish off with a really neat activity where we make our own soil-based ecosystem for our homes. Come on and learn. Let's learn some amazing facts about soil. Living in the soil are plant roots, bacteria, fungi, protozoa, algae, mites, nematodes, worms, ants, maggots, insects and grubs, and larger animals. Soil is made up of about 25% water, 45% minerals, 5% organic matter, which is things that used to be living like plants and animals, and 25% air. Healthy soil has amazing water retention capacity. For every 1% increase in organic matter, there are as many as 25,000 gallons of water available per acre. In one teaspoon of healthy soil, there are 100 million to 1 billion individual bacteria. All of the soil microbes in one acre foot of soil weigh more than two cows. One acre foot of soil is about the size of a large eight lane swimming pool. Earthworm populations consume two tons, which is over 4,000 pounds of dry matter per acre per year. They partly digest it and mix it with the soil. And healthy soil is the key to feeding 9 billion people by 2050. So we're going to do a little experiment so you can get a closer look at those layers in the soil that you want to garden in. You're going to take a jar and fill it up about halfway with the soil. And then you're going to fill it almost to the top, maybe about three quarters with the water. And you're going to shake it. And you're going to shake it for a little while. You're going to have to shake it for about 30 seconds. Maybe you can sing a little song to yourself. It's really a good exercise. This really mixes all the soil around and then draw it out into the layers. Okay, now we'll check on it in a little bit. So in about 25 minutes, your jar should look a little something like this. You can see some objects floating on the top and then we have our layer of water, and as we go down, we have some different layers of different sized particles. Observe the layers in the jar and see what you can tell about them. How many layers are there? Which layer is made of the biggest particles? Which is made of the smallest? Can you guess why? To further examine the different layers and what they're made of, you can sort out the material and examine it. Just use a spoon to get the stuff off the top layer, put it on a paper towel, and then carefully pour off the water on the top. Then if you scoop out some grains of the top level onto another paper towel and keep going through the layers that there are. After each layer has been placed onto the towels, you can examine them with a magnifying glass if you have one. What else can you tell about the different layers? You can also do this experiment with dirt you've collected from different parts of the yard or the neighborhood or wherever you can find some. So I hope you've learned a lot about the layers of soil and we'll learn some more about what makes healthy soil and why it's important to grow our gardens in. The soil you plant your garden in is made up of several layers. The first layer is called humus and it's made of rotting plants, leaves, wood, and animal matter. Humus helps hold the rocky parts of the soil together. The next layer is called clay. Clay is soft and sticky and made up of very small grains that hold the water very well. The next layer is called silt. Silt particles are a little bit bigger than clay particles. After silt comes the sand. Sand particles are a little bigger still. It doesn't hold much water. That's why when you hold sand in your hands, it's dry and crumbly. The final layer is rocks and pebbles and they fall to the bottom because they're so heavy. A lot of your soil is made up of rocks. Those are the layers of soil.
We talked before a little bit about all of the billions of creatures that live in the soil. Most of them are too small to see. You can find online lots of videos of soil microbes at work, or if you have access to a microscope, you can check them out yourself. There is one creature that lives in the soil that you're probably very familiar with. Let's see if we can find some. Worms. Worms are excellent for the soil. They dig air holes so the roots of the plants have air to grow. They're also amazing decomposers. They eat their body weight every day. And they add nutrients back into the soil from their castings or worm poop. One great way to tell the health of the soil is how many worms are in it. You're gonna dig a cubic square foot, which is one foot down, one foot over, and one foot over on the other side, and count how many worms there are. Wow! This soil has a lot of worms. If there are at least 10 worms in this area of soil, that means you know you've got great soil. And as you can see, we definitely have 10 worms in this soil. They're literally everywhere. Here's another easy test you can do at home to see if your soil is healthy. This test tests the pH level, and that's basically how much acid is in your soil. Now you can buy fancy kits at the store to do this, but you don't need to, you can do this at home. What you're going to do is you're gonna take samples of soil from an area, preferably where you want a garden, and you're gonna take two samples and put them in two separate jars. In the first jar, you're going to take a half a cup of vinegar and pour it into the soil. And then you're gonna observe. Do you see any bubbles? No. Do you hear any fizzing? No. That means that your soil isn't too alkaline, which is the opposite of acidic. So, you're gonna then move on to the next test. In the next test, we're testing for acidity. And we are going to first pour a half a cup of water into the soil and mix it. Then we're going to take a half of baking soda and mix that into the soil. Mix it around real well so we get it all in there. And then you're going to observe again. Do you see any fizzing? No. Do you hear any bubbles? Yeah. So if you don't see any fizzing or bubbles in either of these, but you hear it, it means it's just a little bit of the alkaline or acidic. So if your soil ends up being alkaline, if it reacts to the vinegar, then you're going to want to add some sulfur or some pine needles. And if it's too acidic, and it reacts to the baking soda, then you're gonna to wanna to add some wood ash or limestone. This way you can keep your soil healthy for all those wonderful plants you're going to plant. In our final project today, we are going to grow something ourselves. We are going to make what is called a terrarium. Terrarium comes from two different Latin words, terra meaning earth, and a shortened version of aquarium, which we, means water carrier. So I found this when I was down by the river. You can see it there. It's kind of a natural terrarium. An old bottle got stuck in the riverbed, got some dirt in it, and a seed. And this plant has been growing in there since I found it about six months ago. So for our terrarium, you're going to need a glass container. And depending on what you're growing, you can have it open or it will have a cover on top and we'll discuss the difference in a moment. Some soil, some small pebbles. I've chosen to put bigger rocks on the top, but you can do pebbles on top as well. A plant and some tools to plant your material. So we're gonna go with the cactus and cactus don't need a lot of water so they can have an open top. 
If you use something that likes a lot of water, like moss or ferns, you're going to want to have a cover on there so you can keep the humidity in and keep the plants wet. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take the small pebbles and make a small layer on the bottom and even it out. And then you're going to put your soil in and you need at least two inches of soil so that the plant has ample soil to take root in. And then you're going to make a spot for your plant. Now, I have a cactus, so I have to be very careful about how I do this. I would suggest if you're going to go with a cactus, or maybe use some gloves. We're going to try and do this really carefully. You're going to set the cactus down into the soil. You're going to integrate the soil from the plant with the soil that we put in the jar. and sturdy. And then you're going to decorate the top. And we're going to go with some decorative rocks I found. Now you can get really creative with this. You can use a larger container and, and plant more plants. You can put figurines in there. You can put seashells in there. we have a little terrarium. You can make a whole bunch of different kinds of terrariums for your house and have a garden inside your home. <laughs>